Hello, I'm David Cheston with 989, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This is where we get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock with news on trade. First, trade tension between the US and China seems to be fading, at least until the next presidential tweet. The Chinese appear to have agreed to some vague plan to increase imports from the US, and a senior American official said they are putting on hold their tariff penalty plan. However, it doesn't appear that China accepted the US-specific demands. More consultations are planned. When Wall Street opens tomorrow, it is likely to get a boost from this development. These moves come after a tough turn in Congress on Saturday. The Republican measures to soften the impact on their farm sector couldn't get the votes in the House to pass, based on the enormous deficit raising cost. Bit of an own goal here, as the party who started the current trade war has been unable to shield itself from its local impacts. Then China abruptly ended the anti-dumping probe into imported American sorghum. Domestically, US home mortgage rates have hit a seven-year high. The average 30-year fixed rate mortgage is now at 4.61%. A standard variable rate mortgage is now at 3.77%. These represent a five or six basis points rise in just a week. Rising rates have traditionally held back their real estate markets for both new builds and resales. Americans owe $15 trillion for housing loans, so a one basis point rise adds $1.5 billion to their payment load per year. In the past week alone, that has risen by $7.5 billion per year. In Canada, their CPI inflation rose at the rate of 2.2% in the year to April, that is down from 2.3% in the year to March. Meanwhile, Canadian retail sales rose much more strongly than expected, but that was only due to surging car sales. Otherwise, they slipped unexpectedly. This is the third straight month Canadian inflation has been higher than the Bank of Canada target. Meanwhile, the EU trade balance came in almost exactly where analysts had expected, but it doesn't hide the surge in trade for both imports and exports, which is really quite impressive. Their large surplus with the US swelled, their deficit with China, which is even larger, grew as well. Overall, their surplus shrank a small amount. And the EU is moving to try to protect its companies from fallout from the US's unilateral imposition of sanctions on Iran. The US Treasury 10-year yield is now at 3.06. That's five basis points down from this time on Friday. The Chinese 10-year is at 3.72%. That's three basis points lower. While the New Zealand equivalent is at 2.89%. That's up one basis point. Gold markets are now closed, ending at $1,292 an ounce in New York last week. That's basically unchanged. Oil prices are down a little and are now just under $71.50 a barrel, while the Brent benchmark is now just on $78.50 a barrel. The US rig count was stable last week after six straight weeks of gains. The Kiwi dollar will start the week at 69 US cents as early trading is seeing the greenback rise. On the cross rates, we're down to 91 Point nine Aussie cents and 58.7 euro cents. That puts the TWI just on 72. I'm David Chaston. That was 98.9 brought to you by interest.co.nz.